In this video, I want to take folks through just real briefly as far as some of the common elements of the Maya workspace. Also, this is to kind of help get you started, but also to give you some tips and tricks as far as not panicking if something closes, things like that. Now, Maya overall is a very intense program from the standpoint that you have a lot of options out of the gate. One thing that I often advise folks whenever they're first starting with 3D modeling in any 3D modeling program is pick a cluster of elements and learn them well. Trust me, as you move on, as you get more advanced, the rest of the toolbox will come. So to start out here, just to talk a little bit about some things you might want to pay attention to in Maya. The first thing that I often see throwing folks is actually the main menu bar here. We're used to main menu bars from other software programs, you know, Microsoft products, Adobe products, etc. One thing that Maya does a little bit differently, though, is you have kind of this core menu bar where it's file, edit, create, select, modify, display, and windows. Right now, you can see I have some options here as far as working with meshes, UVs, Arnold, etc. But that's simply because of this modeling drop down menu. If I click on the drop down here, notice that I actually have different sets of main menu bars. So for example, if I wanted to do work with some FX, I click on this and you notice now how after Windows, I have a whole new set of different elements here that I can work with. For folks that are first starting out in Maya, this can actually kind of throw you. I see this in my classroom where if I tell students we're going to work with editing meshes, maybe by accident they forgot to change back the menu bar. Unfortunately, the set menu does remember as far as jumping between, you know, so if you close Maya, you reopen it, it's going to remember the last menu bar you were on. So I'm going to go ahead and snap this back to modeling. That's one of those things in this software package you just got to learn to get used to. That if you're not seeing something you're looking for up on this main menu bar, the first thing you want to do is check to see which setting you're at. Let's jump down right below that and let's talk a little bit about your shelves. The shelves are a great way of pulling and working with core elements without having to dig through this main menu bar. Yes, in your more advanced projects, as you continue to practice, you are going to be digging through these main menu bars. However, for right now, if you are just starting out, these are a great option as far as getting kind of the core elements and being able to practice with the different items here. Having said that though, having this many shelves can be really overwhelming to start out with. Also too, you're relying on icons. So if you don't know what an icon means, you're kind of sitting there guessing. Now, another thing I want to point out here is you can see as far as like differences and now another thing I'd like to point out here is notice these green brackets around some of the tools here in the poly modeling shelf. Just so you are aware, what that means is this is something new in my case in Maya 2023. That means that Autodesk updated and either added this or it's a brand new tool. So here you can see when you hover over it with the difference for AB, notice right at the end there it says new in Maya 2023. That's all that means. So you can even see down here uh, in the, I also have my blue pencil now available as far as working in my main scene area. So my advice is pick a tab and just start practicing with it. Starting out, at least for my students, I work in the poly modeling tab pretty heavily when we're first starting out. We do eventually get into NURBS as well in the sculpting. And then we also will utilize Arnold from the standpoint of going into our render options and working with also as well the rendering tab for our lights. Again, pick a few get comfortable with them. So this actually can now lead us down into the outliner and our left menu bar here. The outliner, think of it if you've ever worked in other software packages like Unity and Unreal, these are like your scene uh, controls here. These are all of the elements that are present in the 3D scene when you are working in Maya. I have enough screen space that I always leave my outliner open so that I can go in and look at what I currently have in my scene. 
Having said that, notice that by default, you do have some grayed out options here as far as the different cameras. You also have a default light set. This is great whenever you're using the Maya engine. Uh, if you just want to look at your model and not worry about lighting, you can get some very quick up and running renders. Now, one thing that I've seen folks do too, just as a warning, is down at the bottom of our left-hand menu bar here. Up on the top here, you have kind of your main core controls and selection options. Down at the bottom here, though, you have things that can actually affect the outliner and also the layout of the scene. The very bottom button here, you can kind of see it's indented in blue, will show and hide my outliner. I will so often see folks accidentally bump this button and then they can't find their outliner. That's where you can turn it on and off again. Now, right above it though, you also have your panel controls and that's for these individual scenes. By default, Maya and many other 3D uh, programs, what they love to do is start out in that perspective view. It looks sexy, it draws you in and it's you can get excited about it. Having said that though, you may not always want to work in the perspective view. You may want to work either in a front, a right, a top, a bottom, as you're aligning and combining different polygons or NURBS to make an object. Now, you do have the keyboard and mouse controls of the Alt key and using the left mouse button. So you can actually turn, pivot, etc. in the in the environment. Another thing in the general workspace in Maya, though, is up in the right hand side here, you do have this little widget that allows us to kind of snap between the different views. So you can see I can click, I can use the arrows, or I can even kind of come in here right on the edges. I can get into kind of a perspective view of what I'm working on. And that's fine. I've had students that really like to use that right widget and just go in and using their alt and left key, they control so that, again, it's all about screen real estate. However, you may want to also come over here. They do have some pre-chosen panel layouts here. You have the side by side where you have the front and then you have the perspective. One of my personal favorites, just because I like to be able to see things from the multiple angles simultaneously, is I do like the four cut here, where I have my top, my front, my side, and then I can preview in my perspective view. It's a rarity I actually, whenever I'm in this layout, that I'm working in the perspective view. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap this pack to just the big perspective view. But the last thing to point out here in this video is just talking a little about tying together your shelves and shelves that you choose to work with, but also as far as the right-hand side of the Maya interface. Now on the right-hand side of the Maya interface, what's a little bit different here is in comparison to things like the shelves where you have the tabs going across the top here, on the right-hand side, we have the different windows, but their tabs go along all the way on the right edge. They honestly don't look like tabs and folks can miss these when you're first starting out. But if you click on each of these here, you see how it snaps between each of them. The controls for these tabs are located up on the top here, right below workspace. So for instance, often when we're first starting out, I'll have folks tie into the poly models modeling shelf to practice with the polygons, but then that can also lead us into the editing modes, but also some of the core mesh elements here that they can work with. Yes, you can access these across the top here. However, I also find having just a toolkit element here can help students get a little bit more comfortable. Now, like its counterpart, like the outliner, you can accidentally close each of these windows here. And those are controlled up on the top here. So for instance, if I click this button, notice on the right-hand side how no longer I have a modeling toolkit tab. It's because I hit it. Show it again notice the modeling toolkit comes back. If all else fails, so you've closed something, you can't remember how you closed it, what you can try is up on the workspace. Right now I'm in general. Notice that there are tons of presets as far as what you may be working with. I would stick to one workspace and get comfortable in it before you're snapping to other workspaces. But if you think you messed something up, there is an option in the dropdown that you can reset it to the default layout.
you click, Maya's going to flash for a second, and you're going to be right back where you started. So there are some things put in place as far as your workflow is concerned. And again, I emphasize with this interface, pick a few things, get really good at them, get comfortable with them, and then keep adding more in to your toolbox as far as working in this environment.